get what you deserve. And it's not because you're not a good person, but rather because you always settle for what you like. Like your, your, your type is keeping you from your soul, man. And I say that because I know some of y'all got these standards like, oh, well, D, I won't settle for this. I won't settle for that. My standards are this, that, and the other. I'm going to tell you something. I never listen to what anybody, y'all, whoever out there says their standards are. I always look at what they tolerate because that's going to tell you what their standards are. Whatever you tolerate is a reflection directly of what your standards truly are. And a lot of y'all tolerate things that are so contrary. In fact, maybe even blocking what, what it is that you deserve from coming into your life. And that's why you have not received it. I know this ain't going to be one of the messages y'all like. I'm in a different setting right now. So I hope you guys can even hear me. But the truth of the matter is so many of y'all deserve so much better and so much more than the very things that you actually enjoy. The things that you like. Like your standards, if they're high, that's not the problem. So many people will tell you, well, you know, your standards are unrealistic. I'm not that guy. But I'm, I am able to let you know. If your standards are misplaced, your standards may be on the things that excite you, but they need to shift over to the things that actually fulfill you. Just like this young lady that watched my last master class, the seven traps every empath must be aware of. So some of y'all heard me talk about that, but at the end of my master classes, because I only do them like two or three times a year, I always give an opportunity for people to ask questions both right then and then submit them afterwards. So the sister asked the question like, you know, how do I know if he's playing games? How, how do I know if I should leave? You know, he seems like a pretty cool guy, but there's some things that he's doing. It's just kind of sketchy. And I'm not sure, you know, that kind of vague position. And I always like to come from an educated place. So I asked her, like, what is it that he's doing? Da, 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 da. And I noticed something. She had all of these different ways to articulate why it was wrong or what she actually wanted. And then she's telling me what he's doing, how he's talking, how he's moving. And I'm like, the only justification for him even being in your life, even being at this point where you're still asking if you should leave or how to know, is that you're hanging on to the things that you like about him, that, that you enjoy about him, but you're ignoring all the things that you know you deserve better than that he's coming with. So let me just give y'all some examples. Like, we always talk about, oh, you know, he has to have this much money, or he has to have that much height, or he has to have no baby mamas. Like, I hear all these different standards. But there are five things I would encourage you to never, ever tolerate if you want a healthy relationship, if you want an evolved man, if you want a man who, again, just like the master class was talking about, is not trying to set a trap for you because he knows that you're an empath, you have a big heart. The first thing you should never tolerate in any relationship is a man who lacks self-awareness. And I don't hear anybody talking about this. We, we got Every two months, there's another topic about whether or not a man is going to pay 50-50 in bills. <laughs> but... What about his self-awareness? Why is it so important? I'm not trying to be all higher level thinking or theoretical. The self-awareness is key whenever it comes to accountability. Self-awareness is key when it comes to him telling you the truth. Like you'll have some guys tell you about how their last relationship went or you know what they got going on in their life. And they're honestly talking from what they believe to be true. Their last relationship ended because she was so crazy and she was so this, that, and the other, but they lacked the self-awareness to see how their decision-making, how their constant deterioration of that ex that horrible, horrible ex drove her to that space where she was no longer mentally stable. Their lack of self-awareness makes them believe that they are working hard. They, they are growth oriented because they reach new levels in Call of Duty on, 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 in NBA 2K. But clearly they don't have any priorities like you should always look at. No, nah, let, let, I hear what you're saying, but let me see if. It aligns with what I'm seeing in real life so I can judge your awareness. That's one of the first things. There's five things you should never tolerate. And actually, the fifth one is absolute no-go. But there's four more. One of them is a man who lacks self-awareness. You ain't got to judge him, cut him down. When you see that a man lacks self-awareness, it's basically a man who's lying to himself. And he's lied to himself for so long and so well, even he believes his own BS. Put I down in the chat if you've ever met a man, met a man that... Lie to himself. Like, you're looking at what he's got going on. You look at what he's doing, but you've heard how he's described it. And it's like, it's not lining up, but even as you bring it to his attention, hey, I'm not really sure that you're such a great father if you don't talk to your kids, you look for any excuse not to be with your kids, you're spending all this money on you, and even me, as you're trying to, as we get getting to know each other, but your kids don't have new coats, your kids' clothes are too small, your kids, are, you know... Like, what, what's really going on? You're complaining about your baby mama wanting $200 a month in child support, but you got all of this money to try and impress and love by me. I'm not sure I can go forward with this. Like, y'all ever met a man, and I know I'm kind of going really specific. Y'all be surprised at some of the stuff that I get. Y'all ever met a man that was so entrenched in his own delusion 
You just had to step back and let him have that. And I advise everybody to do that because honestly, that's the only way to protect your peace is to stay away from people who have to lie and be outside of integrity in order to try and defend theirs because they're so fragile in their ego. They can't even go into the truth of the matter and make improvements in their life. So these are people who lack self-awareness. You talk to somebody who lacks self-awareness, honestly, you must, you must be telling them to stop, time to go. You might as well tell them, that's the thing you should never tolerate. Your relationship cannot work. I get height matters. I get this hygiene. Absolutely hygiene, by the way. Let me just go and leave that out. But I get some of these other aesthetics matter. But please, y'all, if you're dating a dude and you, you realize he lacks self-awareness, man, run the other way. Run the other way. It's not about him being perfect either. It's just like that literally cannot work with you as a growth-oriented woman who lives in reality. The second thing you should never tolerate in a relationship is a lack of effort. Effort equals interest. Interest is, is measured by a man's investment. I'm not talking about financial alone. That matters. That matters. But we ain't just talking about financial investment. But if that man can't put forth effort, and I've talked about this before because I saw somebody talking about, oh, you shouldn't have to tell a man how to love you. Yes, you should. You should have to tell a man how to love you. You should have to guide him and show him specifics on what you need, what your love language is, according to your attachment style. You should. But you should never have to make a man put in effort to learn how to love you. You should never make a man or, or feel like you have to force a man to try and show tangible improvements from wherever he was last time before you communicated clearly what it is that you needed. You know, not every woman wants you. Some women want quality time. Some women would prefer that a man, you know, blocks off time in his schedule on a weekly basis to spend time with her and, and go and take her to experience something new as opposed to some fancy diamond ring. Like some women, like you're not like everybody else. I hope you understand that even if you surround yourself with other women who share your interests and tastes, there's no way for a man to just guess his way into your heart. But you should never, ever feel like you're trying to get this man to even lift a finger to love you or see that he's lifting just a finger and feel like you're doing something wrong or asking for too much because you want him to go all in. 10 toes down, both hands, roll up his sleeves and actually put forth the effort. You know, I noticed something. A lot of y'all were in these situations with guys and they're lazy lovers. You're not asking for the sun, moon and stars. It's going to feel like that if you just get a man who puts forth the appropriate amount of effort. But you're not asking this man to give you his kidney. You're not asking this man to make his whole world revolve around you. In fact, that's not even what you want. But if you find yourself asking the man to put forth effort, and he was the one that stopped you from what you was doing. It's like, you, you didn't put a gun to his head. Like, if you put a gun to a man's head, that's one thing. <laughs> if you beg that man, that's one thing. But you didn't beg him, you didn't put a gun to, you didn't force him to do nothing. He voluntarily came in here and wasted your time. You should never tolerate a lack of effort. Now, don't think that this is just so exhaustive. Like, if this man ever has anything going on and he tapers off a little bit, that that's a, a no-go. Cut him off. No, like, use your discernment. Use your intuition. If that man has been consistently putting in effort and energy for years and then he has a week or a month where he's not on his game, absolutely. Just bring it to his attention. Communicate. I'm not telling you just fall at the first sign of whatever. What I'm saying is that the first sign that you're getting that this man don't want to put in effort, not that he gets it right, Everybody ain't coming ready to be the romantic knight, white, a white knight in shining armor. But if he can't put in effort, why are you, you ain't nobody's motivational speaker. You ain't nobody's caffeine uh, espresso to, to come into the relationship. No. Because all of the energy that you're putting into him to get him to put energy into you is now being taken away from you at least being able to be the version of who you could have been without him. Basically, you could have done bad all by yourself. Now you're doing worse because you got this dead weight, waste of space in your life. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense to any of y'all? Things that you should not tolerate and how we're getting away from just the aesthetics. It's not to say that you can't have standards, things that you like and enjoy, uh, you know, that you gotta be super deep with every single thing, but there are some fundamental basics that you should not tolerate if you're a growth-oriented woman and you know you're deserving of and capable of being a contributor to a healthy relationship. Lack of effort, lack of investment, lack of interest. Is the second one. Actually, it's like two or three in one, but whatever. <laughs> the third thing that you not tolerate is a lack of compassion. You know, whenever, as men, I, I put myself in this too, because I've been here before. I'm not talking from the pedestal, I'm your big bro, per usual. But we have this black and white thinking that comes natural to us. Now, nothing's wrong with that if we're 16, you know, 18, 20 years old. 
But as we get older and, and we decide we want to be in romantic relationships, we want to have children, we want to deal with people, we have to evolve beyond our initial, whatever our innate approach is to dealing with things, even things where you're wrong. What I'm getting at here is if you're dealing with a man and it seems like anything that you actually do wrong, that you can admit is wrong, comes with a death sentence or comes with him giving himself a pass to talk to you any kind of way, you got to go. If you notice that any time that you're off your own game, you know you're not your best self. His initial approach is strictly fix the problem or else there's no compassion. There's no consideration. What room is there to be a human being in your relationship? You're, you're not you're going to put in work, but this shouldn't feel like a job. You're going to you're going to put in energy investment of your own because, of course, you're not asking for something from this man. You're not willing to give. But there should be some level of compassion. Some of y'all are dealing with guys. That honestly, they're just not they're not ready for a relationship. They're ready to succeed. They're ready to go out here and dominate and be great versions of themselves for the world. But when it comes to dealing with you, you never have the safety and security because your safety includes compassion. It, it includes somebody who knows how to soften enough for you to feel comfortable in divulging things with them in, in order to be vulnerable with them, in order to not be in fear or paranoia that anything that you do is going to come with, again, with this X. You know, we've talked about, uh, you know, narcissists and manipulation and walking on eggshells. You know, don't think that eggshells, that whole concept strictly applies to people who criticize every little move or anything like that. Eggshells also applies to whenever you actually may, again, make a mistake, say the wrong thing, forget a thing. And you know that you have a man who is so unforgiving, who is so primed to look for that one thing that you may do wrong. He don't even have the default expectation that you're going to do right. Therefore, he's not cultivating more of that in you. That is one hell of a relationship to be in. And it's not going to feel like a relationship after a while. It's going to feel like a hellhole. And you're going to start seeking out spaces where you can be human to a compassionate man. The fourth thing you should never tolerate in any relationship is a lack of self-control, a lack of discipline. And I'm talking about in that man. Like you, you can't just have standards on how he deals with you. One of the biggest evolutions I've seen in women, especially those that get any of my programs, because I don't see anybody else talking about this. I ain't trying to my own horn, but facts are facts. But I've never seen nobody speak on how important it is to assess a man's relationship with himself, a man's trajectory within himself. Not strictly how does he deal with you? Does he light candles for dinner? Does he put out rose petals for you? Like, no, 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 no. How is this man with himself? Like, it's not about being judgmental. It's not about being super quick. It's like, hold on, can I see in you a healthy relationship with, with self, even when it comes to you denying yourself what you might otherwise like? Can I see in you a level of discipline that will spill over into how you raise our kids, into how you protect our relationship, into how you manage your, your emotions when it comes time for you to talk to me? Self-control, discipline, self-regulation. You know, there are going to be times whenever y'all get into an argument or y'all have some type of heated exchange. You know, something may trigger him. He may go through something at work or, you know, whatever. And he's going to need the evolution internally to know how to regulate himself in times where he's upset. Or else, whatever comes to him is going to come out. Whatever he's dealing with is, boom, going to just come out to you. And now you're at the mercy of whatever happens outside of him because he's got no management on what's going on inside of him. Is that is that making sense to anybody? Y'all y'all put y'all put I if I'm making sense to you and you still with me so far. I know about this time I start losing people when I start talking this real stuff. There's only so many people that can handle the level of mental stimulation that comes with these type of topics and these types of conversations. But I'm trying to make it as concise as okay. Some of y'all get it. When you're dealing with a man, look at his level of discipline. He doesn't have to have this super militant structure to his day. But do you see any level of priority? Do you see that he's willing to say no and he has a capacity to say no? Like if you assess a man, let's say he's an attractive guy, he got a little money, he's attractive, he's well-spoken, but you know that in the morning, he's at a certain place voluntarily because he's trying to accomplish his goals. At night, you know he could have women, you know that he could have whatever, but his bed is empty. His phone is not ringing off the hook. 
You know, when y'all talk, it, it, it ain't a whole lot of calls coming in or anything like that. You don't go missing every night or anything like that. Like, you know, like, hold on, he's got spaces in his life reserved for his goals. That's you seeing a man who has self-control. If he ain't have any self-control, it'd be whatever feels good, whether it's video games, women, whatever. Are you able to see a level of discipline? When you tell him no, when you tell him, I'm not really interested in sex tonight. When you tell him, nah, instead of staying in and just having sex, I want to go out and have a good time. I want to go out and enjoy some music or something like that. Does he throw a fit? Whenever he's let you know that he's, that he's offended or, or bothered by something that you've done or he's in question about something that you've done, th th does he say it and does he do so in a way that says, okay, he's thought about this. He's careful about his wording. He's mindful about his tone. He's intentional about what he's wanting to have happen at the end of this conversation. Or do you just get this explosion of, of, of emotion and whatever, and you're just supposed to navigate all of that? That's, if, if so, if you're on the latter end, you're dealing with a man who has no self-control. He has no regulation. And he's probably gonna blame you for it at the end of the day. Well, I only said that because you, 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 be very mindful if a man likes to blame you for everything that he had full control over how he decided to respond to. If he had full control over how he responded and he blames you, 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 that goes to self-awareness, that goes to, uh, you know, compassion, that, that goes to a lot of stuff, but definitely self-control, regulation. And the last thing I really want to talk about is you should never, and this is actually an absolute deal breaker level thing, I'm talking about maybe if they got a, he got a good foundation with you, maybe one slip, and after that, it's gotta be a cut. You should never tolerate a lack of respect. That's, that's one thing we have full control over. That's one thing that, you know, no matter how upset we get, mad we get, grieving we are, stressed we are, we should never cross a certain level of disrespect. Now, is he always gonna have this super beautiful, eloquent uh, uh, verbiage that he chooses whenever he talks to you? Maybe not. Maybe sometimes he's a little short. Maybe sometimes he's a little blunt. Again, be, a, be attentive to the patterns. But if that man ever calls you out your name, if he ever threatens harm, if, if you make it clear to him, you're dealing with something that's really emotional, really heavy on your heart, and he ridicules you, like something blatant, we're talking about blatant, because th sometimes the respect thing can be subjective, like what you receive as disrespect may not be a universal rule. But I'm talking about in the space where you've made it absolutely clear or you're dealing with one of those things that should never not be clear to a, an adult. Never deal with a lack of respect. You know, a man may not understand you. He may not agree with you. He should always respect you. Y'all go out, especially in things that you know that he would be pissed off if you did to him. Y'all go out and he feels like he can just do those things to you. No matter how it's making you feel, no matter how you've already expressed this makes me uncomfortable, you're dealing with a lack of respect. You're not dealing with a lack of awareness. You're not dealing with a lack of competence. You're dealing with a lack of respect. And when that man does not respect you, he cannot create or be a collaborative partner in any type of environment that promotes your healing, your safety, your growth, your elevation. He can't. At some point, his love is going to teach you to stop respecting yourself. I was just telling one of the people that got a hold of my masterclass recently, the seven things every empath must be aware of, the seven traps every empath must be aware of. And I was basically telling her like, when you put that energy into yourself, talking about every day when you raise your stand, you will inevitably become so incompatible with anything less than that, you don't even have to try to move away from it. You won't even have to try to block it. It won't be able to last. For instance, if, if to yourself, you speak to yourself in a certain way that builds you up. I can do this. I can do anything. I love myself. I know that I'm capable. Woo, woo, woo. And you come across somebody that likes to talk opposite. Oh, you're going to try that again. Oh, who you think you They're going to be so repulsive to you. They're going to be so disgusting. I'm talking about from them, the music that you listen to. Anything that's lesser than the respect you've established for yourself it's just not going to last. It's going to fall off of you. And so what, what I'm basically getting at here is when you establish that respect, when you really truly come to believe and now your standards are according to what you truly believe about yourself, you will not be able to tolerate anything less. If you know for your own self, you spend time with yourself, you make time for yourself, you make time for those who are around you that you love. And this man always got an excuse to why he barely giving you even spare time. 
much less main time, protected time that's carved out just for y'all, you won't be able to tolerate it. It won't even be a question. Even if, if somebody can make a case that you should try and give him a chance, you know, he gets to you whenever he gets to you. Every two weeks, you get a response. Every five days, you get a response. You know, he may go a day and a half, two days without even responding to a simple text message to let you know that you, he got yours, but he left you on red. Even if somebody could make a case, you would not be able to stomach that guy. Like, some of y'all, and I love this actually, some of y'all have the standard financially where you're like, okay, this guy has to have a certain amount of money. He has to have a certain income. I have to see a certain credit score. And whenever he's not there because of your standard, even though Tyler Perry and everybody else can make a case that, hey, he's a good man, Savannah, <laughs> you cannot do it. If you know that man is living in Section 8, if you know that man, you know, constantly borrowing his homeboy's car, if you know that man has to ask you for money, y'all keep it real with me. Y'all, hey, ain't no respectability politics over here. Keep it real with me. If a man in the first month of meeting you asked you for $500 because he was behind on rent this month, would that turn you on? Would it be neutral or would it turn you off? Y'all keep it real with me. Turn you on, neutral, or turn you off? Like, hmm, don't know about that. I want, I want somebody to keep it real with me. Because if your standard is that, okay, at minimum, this man needs to be able to take care of himself. At minimum, this man needs to be self-sustaining. At minimum, I need to see that this man has managed his finances or has his priorities in check to where he's not dating if he's that hard off, like if it's that bad off for him, and we in the very beginning, it don't matter what I or anybody else says about you should give him a chance because he saved 10 cats from a burning building. Your standard is going to make him repulsive to you. So what, what, what I'm getting at here is, as a woman, I, I want you guys to have the standards of what you like is what you like, and that's fine. But also incorporate the standards according to how the man is treating you, how that man's impact in your life will affect you, how that man's relationship with himself will either protect or not protect the relationship, how that man deals with you in times of conflict where maybe you are absolutely wrong, but does it cultivate the best version of you on the other side of that if you spent years next to that? And then most importantly, does that man respect you? When he doesn't understand, does he respect you? When he doesn't agree with you, does he respect you? When you dead wrong, does he respect you? When y'all are not on good terms, when his life is up and down, when his goldfish died, when his money gets low, even though he's a good steward of money and he's, you know, in the beginning he was solid, some things happen, does he respect you? If he don't respect you, you can't love him. You can't work with him. Because inevitably you're going to not be able to respect him. Even if you're not a disrespectful woman. Some of y'all hold so much shame over yourself because you got disrespectful with a man that honestly wasn't respectable. And I'm not saying you should ever give yourself a pass for disrespecting, but you didn't even know that version of you could come forth and talk to a man a certain way, treat a man, disregard a man, etc. Because you were dealing with a man. Y'all, we always talk about the love tank, but you were dealing with a man who had deposited nothing in the in the tank of respect. It's like some people you ain't even got to know or have a close relationship with, but because of the level of respect they walk in, they operate in, that they treat others with, you have no choice but to respect them. Y'all ever met some of them people like you don't know you don't have a, a personal relationship with them, but the level of respect they operate in, they treat others with, they like you have no choice but to respect them. And you already are a respectable person. But when you're dealing with somebody who warrants no respect because they've deposited nothing in that respect tank, it's empty. You're going to struggle to not be disrespectful, even if you're not a disrespectful woman. And then. If, you, if you're a woman with a good heart, you don't normally do people like that. You may end up being in shame or feeling some type of guilt because, man, why did I talk to that man like that? I know, I know, blah, 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 but I should have never said this about him. I should have never taken this tone with him. I should have never walked off on him, did, whatever, whatever. And I'm here to tell you the key to avoiding that is to first make sure you're dealing with a man who wants respect. He doesn't lack respect in how he deals with you. He leads with respect in, in, in all default situations where anybody else, you see that he's self-respecting. One thing you can never tolerate because it will bring the worst out of you. And it may even bring the worst out of him, even worse out of him. is a lack of respect. You know, some guys will actually use the way that they treat you 
as like a reverse psychological manipulation. It's, it's one of the traps. Actually, this is not one of the seven deadly traps every empath must ignore. I actually talked about those, but this will be an additional one. Is that reverse psychology? I'm gonna treat you bad and I'm gonna judge you off of your reaction to me treating you bad. Empaths, y'all are especially susceptible to this because you do have a standard for what you would never or you never would think is okay or appropriate to deal with somebody or talk to somebody like. And so you'll have people who know that even if you are normally a good person, you can be brought out of character. If you're not careful and you don't have the boundaries to get people out of your life who bring you back to that version of you that you had to outgrow or that you're still healing from being, you'll have a trap that will be set for you as an empath of people who would try to trigger that version of you and then define you by that version of you. That's when I, I didn't even go over that because the, the, the seven I did go over in the master class are so much more common and so much more deadly. I mean, when I say deadly, I'm talking about on an emotional, mental health level. Matter of fact, if you want access to that master class where I went in depth about the seven traps in past must never ignore, you must always be aware of. It's absolutely free, by the way. This is not a paid class. I got a lot of paid content. This is free where I went in depth on that. Click the link that you see pinned down in the comments right here, or if you're on YouTube, it may be at the top in blue or whatever, but click the link. It's maybe in the description as well. Get access to the master class. You're gonna register for it, then come back here. But moral of the story is this. Don't listen to anybody telling you not to have standards. Don't listen to anybody telling you that your standards are unrealistic. But absolutely, on your own, audit whether or not your standards are according to what you like, are they according to your sympathy for people? Or are they according to what fulfills you and nothing less? When you set standards according to your sympathy, you're going to deal with basically the equivalent of the homeless. And I'm not talking about in some kind of way like, oh, don't, don't, don't shame the homeless. All right, you love on the homeless. You give to the homeless. You don't fall in love. You don't try to build a life with. You don't start a legacy with. They're not in position. So if emotionally and mentally this man is homeless, if in, in terms of respect, in terms, in terms of compassion, in terms of energy investment, in investment, if this man needs government assistance, he don't need your love. If the, if the man needs saving, don't put on your cape. That's not what the romantic relationship was designed for. The romantic relationship was designed for people who can reciprocate, mutual interest, mutual benefit. You're not homeless. You got, you got some structure and foundation in terms of your, your mental, emotional capacity of loving somebody, treat them right, in terms of your respect for others. Why are you out here trying to take in stray cats, stray dogs? I know that sounds very so harsh. You know what's really harsh? Looking at somebody, knowing that they had no problem receiving all your love, and they're not doing their part to reciprocate. They just see you being devoid of everything that you need, everything that you asked them for, and they let you continue to starve while they continue to enjoy the fruits of being with you. That's harsh. But those are just my thoughts. I could be wrong. Y'all let me know in the comments if you got anything from this that was actually of value. And if you did, hit the share button so somebody else in your timeline can as well. I'm your big brother per usual. And if you want access to that masterclass, I just did this masterclass. It's coming down soon. The seven traps every empath must beware of. Click the link that you see pinned down in the comments, or if you're on YouTube or Instagram, you know, the directions are there. If you're on YouTube, go to the description, Facebook, captions, etc. Click that link, get access. 